Hello everyone, in this lecture today I'm going to talk to you about auditing in the series of our lectures on GMP. Today's topic is auditing. So why there is a need of auditing in pharmaceutical or biotechnological industry? Uh, because uh, pharmaceutical products are often manufactured, tested and distributed in a complex environment and this environment creates opportunities for potential errors and the results of which may lead to products being unsafe or lacking required quality. Okay, so uh, this is one point because the products could be unsafe or they lack required quality because these products, these pharmaceutical products, they are created in, uh, in complex environment. So therefore, the pharmaceutical companies, they are expected to have effective quality assurance system and they should comply with the regulatory requirements, including PICS, WHO guidelines, uh, TCA regulatory guidelines, ICS guidelines, FDA, CFR 21 and FDA guidelines, national pharmacopias and company policies. Okay, so this is the brief introduction and now why auditing then okay so why auditing because which the pharmaceutical companies they must uh, uh, be audited because a planned independent and independent systemic and documented process of obtaining objective evidence and evaluating uh, it objectively to determine uh, the extent to which audit criteria or requirements are fulfilled okay so in the pharmaceutical companies if we want to determine independently and by following systematic and documented process if we if we want to obtain evidence and evaluate uh, the company uh, to to what extent you know the audit criteria or requirements are fulfilled uh, to, for that purpose uh, the, com the company must be audited another important point why auditing is because auditing can help company identify the areas that could be improved okay so this is another important point why auditing is important and the third point is that without an audit, because the company is at higher risk of non-conformities, uh, uh, regulatory actions, uh, security breaches, poor product quality, and loss of certification and registration, increased product liability risk, and suboptimal pr process improvement system. So uh, because of all these reasons, there, there is a need uh, for the pharmaceutical companies or the biotechnological companies uh, that must be audited okay so now and then what are the different types of audits so different types of audits that are performed they are mainly three types one is regulatory audit a uh, quality systems audit and internal audit okay so uh, first is regulatory audit so what kind of audit is called regulatory audit because the regulatory audit is a systemic process of obtaining information and evidence to assess the compliance with the regulations okay compliance with the regulations and the effectiveness of quality assurance systems okay so basically the regulatory audit is performed uh, to obtain the information and evidence to assess compliance with the regulation and effectiveness of quality assurance system okay so uh, another important types of audit is quality systems audit so it is also the systematic process of obtaining information and evidence to assess the compliance with the regulation but here the effectiveness of quality management system here it's the quality assurance system and here uh, in the quality systems audit um, the the purpose is to assess the compliance with quality management systems in addition to a uh, regulatory compliance okay and the final audit is the internal audit as the name suggests these audits are conducted by quality department of, of the company against both regulations and internal quality manage, management procedures. So these companies are conducted by the a com these these audits are sorry conducted by the companies themselves or by the or by the uh, the the the, the, com the, the, the or by the other uh, companies that they hire to perform such audits but these all audits uh, uh, the purpose of these audits uh, uh, is, is, is to make sure that uh, that the regulation and internal uh, quality management procedures are are fulfilled um, in the, the who performs this kind of audits these kind of audits uh, are performed by if the company is performing the audits then it's the quality assurance department to okay, QA department uh, they perform these internal audits okay so three types of audits regulatory quality systems 
and internal. So now, the audit process tools. Uh, what are the different tools uh, uh, that are available for audit audit processing? So basically, system based audit audit approach. This is tool one. Linked based audit approach, risk based audit approach, forensic audit, forecast audit, and data integrity audit. So what is then system based audit approach? The entire purpose of having a system based approach in which the systems are independent yet integrate into each other seamlessly is that having a system based inspection compliance program ensures that the organization is equipped with the ability to assess whether each of the system is in state of control. Okay, so another type of audit process tool is linked based approach. Here, an audit of a linked processes is a, is, is a comprehensive examination of processes to verify that they are performing as intended and processes generate results and linked processes uh, uh, process audits determine if the results are accurate and they are being generated effect by effectively managed processes. Okay, so this is linked based approach. Another approach is a risk-based approach. This is a relatively new way of obtaining evidence independently and objectively uh, regarding assertions about a process for the purpose of forming an opinion about the process and subsequently reporting on the degree to which assertions are implemented. Forensic audit, as the name suggests, this is an examination of firms, individuals or financial records to derive an evidence that can be used in legal proceedings. Okay, the forensic term it always uh, indicates the legal. So uh, the forensic audit is the examination of forms or individuals' financial records to, uh, to derive an evidence that can be used in legal proceedings. Uh, for cause audit, it, it is an audit performed to examine a specific quality failure or a process deviation and to prepare for a, a regulatory inspection. Okay, so this is for cause audit. And data integrity audit, simple, what does the data integrity refer? It refers to the fact that the data must be reliable and accurate over its entire life cycle. Okay. So then what are the different audit principles? The audit principles are integrity, fair representation, due professional care, confidentiality, independence, evidence-based approach, and risk-based approach okay so one two three four five six seven principles there are seven audit principles so the next point is the then that comes is the art of auditing okay so there are there can be different styles because different people they have different styles and also uh, how the auditing is performed also depends on the knowledge and experience of the of, of the auditor and that will also result in you know different depth of the audits and the variability uh, it, it refers to the an understanding of what an audit is expected to achieve should help to limit variability and a, a good understanding of type of process also helps okay so to limit the variability so it, it's, it's required that the auditor understand uh, um, okay what is to achieve um, after the audit is being performed okay so then uh, scope even though a single quality systems may be in a place but audits need to cover enormous scope of manufacturers for example uh, for the mp mm, environment from vitamin tablet to sterile vaccine okay so you how how the, the variable how broad the, the the environment is from vitamin tablet to sterile vaccine and also iso 13485 medical devices for these let's say for tongue depressures to a pacemaker so the audits, uh, uh, audits need to cover uh, the wide scope of the manufacturers. And another important uh, concept that I want to discuss is auditing sampling techniques. Okay, so what are the sampling techniques that are used in auditing? The sampling techniques, the technique should be random, systematic. It can be random. It can be or systematic, haphazard judgment block statistical proportional block so sorry block has been repeated twice so these are the different sampling techniques that can be uh, used in editing okay and so sorry so then a uh, risk-based approach I just briefly want to discuss you know what is this risk-based approach because this is the most effective audit technique uh, so what is risk based approach in the risk based approach uh, the, 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 there should be there is the understanding of the risk but this understanding of the risk 
of what? Of the audit subject and also to the audit subject that refers to the company and also to, to, to the risk to the patients, customers and consumers of medicinal products. Okay, so that this is the risk-based approach. Here, uh, the, the auditor, the, the, we, we try to understand the risk that is posed to the audit subject, that means the company itself, and also posed to the patients, customers, and consumers of the medicinal products. The risk, the key, fa key, key risk factor for regulatory authorities is the type of process. Okay, so because a safety process, uh, processes, biologicals, and other sterile products, they are at, they are highest risk processes, okay? and are given highest risk priority. So basically key risk factor for regulatory authority is the type of process and aseptic process where the environment has to be sterile and for and biologicals and other sterile products at higher highest risk processes and are given highest priority. Uh, so if you ask you know how we can describe and how the editing should be conducted in four simple words and those four simple words how the editing should be conducted are fair okay the auditing should be fair the auditing should be firm and the, it should be friendly and it should be thorough okay so fair firm friendly and thorough okay so now let's talk about what are the attributes that the auditors should have okay so experience auditors should have experience experience is really important for an auditor uh, including but not limited to broad knowledge of quality management systems exposure to various types of manufacturers quality systems and controls knowledge of different types of technology technologies applied in pharmaceutical medical device manufacturing and testing laboratories being able to identify and focus on areas of high risk auditors should have qualification they should be well trained in auditing and final attribute is the auditor should have personal strength so what kind of personal strength they should be honest and unbiased should be diplomatic self-disciplined able to communicate clearly and they should be interested and patient observant they should be firm open-minded and they should have good judgmental skills uh, including strong understanding of risk okay so these are the auditor attributes the next a uh, point is eight eight memoirs so what are these eight memoirs eight memoirs are audit guidance documents okay what are eight memoirs eight memoirs are audit guidance documents they are available from pharmaceutical inspection cooperation scheme or simply PICS okay these documents are good uh, training tools for auditors and they are the, the examples of use, useful PIC memoirs are quality control labs, utilities, biotech, packaging, and APIs. So conducting an audit. Okay, so while conducting an audit, what are the, the following criteria must always be in the mind of the auditor. Point number one is the professionalism. Point number two is preparation. Point number three is technique. Point number four is note taking. And point number five is exit meeting. So professionalism. So what does it mean? It means that the, uh, the auditors, the, they should establish a good rapport by maintaining the professional image throughout the audit process and the follow up phases. They should always be professional. The auditors should always be professional. They should remain professional. Even if uh, the auditees are not being professional, the auditors should be polite and courageous. The auditor, auditors should be sensitive to people reactions. They, the auditors should be properly prepared and auditors should be punctual clean and tidy tidy so another important point is the preparation so the auditors the, the agenda auditor should always prepare in it regret so what they, sh they should the, the, the preparation should always contain the purpose and the scope the agenda should always contain the purpose and the scope auditors attending and the the role of different audi auditors in the audit process approximate timings of the different phases of the audits for example introduction presentation of the site capabilities organization tour document review and close out meeting the agenda should also state if there is a debrief at the end of each day or not okay so there should be preparation auditors sh uh, should ens ensure that they are clear on the audit plan and they should never waste time of the audit and should be precise all the times and um, and also should know that loosely fed questions attract loose answers. 
and next is the technique so the auditor should develop a consist consistent and professional technique uh, should maintain um, concentration and focus think risk and stay balanced the just auditors should not criticize people avoid disputes and they should allow people to save face and taking notes auditors should take good notes on what where and when okay so what where and when and th these notes should be accurate and legible and these notes should be used for exit meeting and final report so these notes these notes are used for exit meeting and final report so exit meeting so what is exit meeting then exit meeting is the in the exit meeting the summary of uh, your findings prior to submitting your audit report uh, this uh, should incorporate and all deficiencies in the exit meeting should be discussed at the exit meeting and those of significance should be stressed and exit meeting should encourage management to invite all concerned and in the exit meeting the auditors should summarize the findings for each department and that should include the strength of the department weaknesses of the department and the areas of the concern okay and audit report all audit report should contain audit findings and all critical and major deficiencies are uh, to be cross-referenced in the audit report and other deficiencies can be cross-referenced in the report but this is not of uh, this is not essential report writing report should be it is a formal document and it should be uh, written in a easy in, in a way which is easy to read and understood by someone not at audit and the, the deficiency should be clearly and concisely concisely worded and the report should uh, should be complete and it's, uh, the the sentences used in the report should be complete and the senten sentences should be gramma grammatically accurate uh, relevant references so all deficiencies should be supported by objective evidence recorded at the, uh, and recorded at the time of the audit and deficiencies that state a reference SOP, SOPs should identify SOP in question. Thank you guys for your kind attention.